So I bought a new microphone for my GoPro. I had the media mod on it initially that had an external mic. However, it didn't really have a sound quality that I wanted and watching other videos, I realized that I needed something more. So I bought the Rode Micro um, external mic with the fuzzies on it to prevent wind noise, make, try and get my quality of my videos up. With that though, it came with two cables to go between the mic and the media mod. So I said, this one, and this one, I'll use the simpler one as it won't get caught on as much. It doesn't have the squigglies in it. But I didn't pay attention to the fact that it has two different ends on it. Whereas the red one, they're both the same. So I used this one. It's simpler. Put it on. Went out and filmed for a day in the video that you guys are going to see where Josh and I were putting up wire and mainline over to his woods that we laid out a few months ago. Did all the filming, get home. Last night I decided, it was about a week later, that I'm gonna edit the video and get this thing put up there. None of the video had any sound. It ended up that the, the mic needed this coiled one to interface with the media mod. So I'm out video. I am gonna voice over it. it it's gonna at least get you the gist of what we're doing there. Um, it loses some of the commentary that no one really pays attention to because it's just me talking anyways. But so that's what's going to happen on this one. Not the same, but we've got it fixed for next time and we should have some better quality um, videos coming. As I'm getting started loading up, this is one inch high density main line. This is the main line that we're going to run from Josh's releaser over to his uh, vacuum pump. It's a little bit cheaper and it's going to move the CFMs of air. Then there's the three quarter main line. Now main line goes from central locations out to big ge geographical areas. Uh, three quarter inch main line will handle about 250 taps uh, per run. His are going to be less than that, but three quarter will work the best for him. This is 30p liter main line that we're using for his mains. 12 and a half gauge uh, high tensile wire. That's what the, the pipe actually hangs off of in the woods. Wire ties to hold the pipe to the wire and then his fittings that he's going to need for his laterals. Chinese finger traps to pull on the pipe and then the ratchets to tension the wire in the pipe. I did bring my spooler and lateral tools with me just in case we got that far I wasn't sure but I didn't want to have to come all the way back to the house and then I loaded a few rolls of 5 16 30p to run his laterals if he if we got to that if not he'd just hang on to it that day the pink lateral line that's for his drops that's a more flexible but we also use the color to tell what year we put those up so we'll have a new color for that next year as people replace it and our new tubing spooler. This will spin out the wire and the main line. Keep it straight. It's easy to lug into the woods if you have to go a little bit. It's portable. This thing's going to be super handy. Josh got his tank brought in the woods a week or so before we filmed this. It's a 500 gallon used dairy tank. It's got some height to it, but it should work out all right. We'll get the spooler set up so we can get some main line out in the woods and get some wire set up today. Now Josh had to use this hemlock as a tail hold for a snatch block so he could drag his tank into place and did it kind of pulled it over. This is one of those cases you want to get things out of the way. As you can see it landed right on the tank and it probably would have come over at some point and there would have been wires as well as a releaser there. So getting that out of the way early before we even get started today will pay dividends in the long run. We did bring his releaser in. It's pretty oversized, but he got a decent deal on it. But we need to have that in place so that we know what height the wires and the pipe need to be in when we come in. Now we're going to run our high tensile wire out. Um, you can see the pink tape there. That's where we flagged out where his mains were going to go before. Moving through the woods, having the brush and the logs kicked out of the way where you're going to be moving. We're going to walk through here five or six times before it's over. So having a clear path makes it easier. As well as when you're checking for leaks later in the season, not having to step over things makes it a lot easier when you're already working in snow and in difficult conditions. 
Now that three tape, that's the tail hold. We're going to run an end ring up here, screwed into the tree. So we drill into this oak and then we'll thread in our eyelet. Linesman's pliers, pretty much the handiest tool you're going to have when you're setting up a tubing system for cutting wire, as well as adjusting just about anything. So you don't need side cutters, just a pair of linesman's pliers is all you need to use. Now we've eliminated any fittings or crimps or anything in our woods. And by doing that, we've gone to all things that are easy that we have with us. Now this one, to go through our tail hold, we're going to use a knot in the wire that's called a figure eight follow through. So you tie the figure eight, as you can kind of see there. It doesn't look as pretty with wire as it does with rope. Then you're going to thread it through your eyelet. And then all you're going to do is simply follow that wire back through. Now this is a uh, knot that's used in life safety. Um, so it won't come apart and it won't break the wire. So we've eliminated other costly pieces for something that doesn't break. And then you just kind of work the knot back and forth to get it into place. So for this one, we ended up having to move our tail hold so that we could, based on where his tank ended up sitting. So we had to go by it and we had to go back to a maple that was behind it. With that, we don't know exactly where we're going to be on height because there's not a lot of pitch coming into this tank on this main. So what we're going to do is make a movable tail hold. So we're going to thread the wire through a piece of pipe and we're going to make a loop there. That way we can adjust this tail hold up and down as needed. Here again, we're not going to use any fittings, gripples, or crimps. We're going to do this with a square knot. A real easy knot. It doesn't slide and it won't break the wire. So we're eliminating costs or tools for what we need. And then just working it back and forth and squeezing the knot, it'll pull the knot into place and then once you put the ratchet on it'll pull it the rest of the way but this won't break the wire and there's nothing that's going to fail in this spot just a simple square knot now for side ties we use a softer wire we start in just a knot on the wire so we go over the top of the wire pull back underneath over the side tie wire again underneath the main line wire and then back over and then we twist it onto itself. Now this is a knot that'll slide as the wire moves through it and it also won't tighten up on that main line wire so it allows it to move. So we're gonna do that and then we've got the wire already threaded through a piece of pipe to protect the tree. Come around, have enough to go back onto the wire, cut it off and we're gonna use that same knot back on that main line wire and that's gonna make it to where it'll slide. We can adjust things and keep things moving as things change in the woods. This knot also lends itself to being untied very easily. So if you need to adjust it, tighten up the side tie, put the wire down on the ground for some reason, it, it makes it very easy to do that and it doesn't tighten up. On our tail hold, using your linesman's pliers, just about a one inch bend in the wire at 90 degrees and there's gonna be a small hole in the bottom of the ratchet. And you're just gonna slide that wire into it and then start tightening it up. Pull some tension on your wire, enough to where it'll stay where you put it. As you can see here, we're already sliding up that wire to get it into place. And this will allow it, once we've got everything done, to go up and down. Now here you can see Josh has his pipe on his side tie wire, but it doesn't go all the way around the tree and it wouldn't really protect it. So we're going to swap that out. Now he's learning how to tie that knot on to that side tie. And there's that pipe swapped out. So it'll protect that tree all the way around it and that wire won't dig into it. Now high tensile wire, you can really pull on it about as much as you can do it. It'll start twinging and twanging through the woods as it's moving and tightening and just keep pulling on it until you really can't pull anymore. Cause the more we can put pressure on that wire, the less sags that'll be in the main line. And now we're spinning out our three quarter main line. Now with 500 foot rolls, you don't really get the friction on the pipe. So one person's able to pull about 500 feet. When you start getting into thousand foot rolls, that's when you'll have trouble that you won't really be able to spin it out. There'll be too much friction on trees and on the ground. So about every 500 feet, you need to have someone pulling on that pipe to make it easier. Now we're going to tie off to the end of our mainline wire. 
When we do that, we're going to go up beyond the tree with our pipe. It may seem like a waste, but what it is is if things ever change, it allows you to splice or add on easier, whereas if you're all the way up against the tree and the wire, you can't do that. Now we're going to run double wire ties. By doubling them up, it's just more strength, but when you do it, you're actually going to pull on your tie tool and it's going to squeeze that wire into the pipe. Now we're going to do this going through our knots and our wire to kind of weave it to where it won't be able to slide and three or four doubles will pretty well hold it at the end of your tail hold. And then you go down and you just hang them loosely, your pipe loose on the wire. About every 10 foot you put a wire tie. Here we're putting the Chinese finger um, grip on and that's what we're going to use to pull this pipe tight to where we can get the sags out of it, stretch it a little bit. It does stretch more in the summer than the winter. And what it's going to do is keep that pipe from sagging and kinking and twisting. And now once you've got your pipe tensioned, then you just start putting a wire tie about every 18 inches, every foot and a half is about where you want to be. Um, a general rule is from your elbow to the tip of your fingers is about the distance you want. Much more than that, you're meaning shortening the distance up. You're kind of just wasting them and longer than that, you'll get little sag. So about every 18 inches works. That main's all set. Now we're going to run our wire out. I let Josh do this one pretty well by himself. I just kind of give him directions and pointers as we went to keep him going. After you do one, it's pretty well easy that you can get these set up by yourself. Now here, Josh is trying the figure eight knot. He does have a background um, that lends itself to knowing knots and he's got it down pretty good. But we're gonna watch, he's got his eight set up and he's getting his wire through ready to go through that eyelet. As he runs it through, he doesn't have enough tail coming off of his knot. So he's not gonna be able to work it back through. You need a lot more with the wire than you do a rope just because of the way it bends and it's pretty stiff and unforgiving. So once he figures out he's short, then he goes, gets a, some more wire to, to be able to work with, and then he can follow his knot right back through and get it pretty easy. And once you've, you've got it pulled through, then it's just simply a matter of working the wire back and forth. It won't be the prettiest knot, but it won't break either. On this one, we stop short of the tank and put the tail hold in. He's tying his square knot there. This one, we had enough pitch coming in and we knew it to where we could be up a little bit higher and not have to fight with it too much. And then you just put a little bit of a kink at your eyelet and the ratchet and that'll keep that so it won't slide as much and things will move a little bit easier. Cut your wire, put your bend in it, work it through the ratchet and start tightening it up. And then side ties. So you're gonna put some tension on the wire to begin with and then go in, put your big turns in where you need to pull up against a tree to make a turn and then you go back after it's tightened up more and put the deflecting ones in that'll really put the tension on it. So we worked until about dark and got three mains up, pipe on two of them and we we're about 150 feet short of pipe for the third one that that can be spliced in later. Now this was a project that we'd been working on for a few months and it really came together in one day and Josh, now he's able to put mains up by himself and laterals. He can figure those out too pretty easy.